friends, we continue to monitor the events on the front line in Ukraine and the latest news. Once again, Ukraine is facing setbacks against the Russians and the situation favors them on the front. Before we begin, please like and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Let's start with yesterday's report stating the liberation of the town of Pietihatki. However, the progress seems to have stalled and preparations are being made for a new breakthrough. On their part, the Russians claim to have already stormed the town to regain control, but this information remains unverified. And let's not forget the high cost Ukraine is paying for victory, with the lack of aviation making the situation much more challenging than it could have been. Therefore, it is possible that a decision will be made to await aviation support for more significant advances on the front. In the Vukhledar direction, artillery exchanges continue, and the Ukrainian forces are actively preparing the territory for further movement while destroying enemy bases and equipment in the near front zone. No reports of new offensive actions have been made, and the front line remains unchanged. The situation in the Kherson direction doesn't improve as the occupiers continue to shell along the entire front line, reaching up to 20 kilometers deep. They constantly claim that the Ukrainian armed forces are attempting to break through to the left bank, but all attempts are being halted. However, this information is likely aimed at boosting the rating of the Russian army. In reality, the situation remains unchanged with no active offensive actions. It is also reported that in the Kherson region there are still 22 settlements partially submerged, while in the Mikulayev region, according to the Ministry of Internal Affairs, as of Monday morning, 22 settlements remain flooded, 5 on the right bank and 17 in the temporarily occupied territory. In the Avdivka direction, the occupiers have ceased attacks but increased shelling of near front settlements up to 10 km deep. The front line remains unchanged and the Ukrainian armed forces are not conducting offensive operations. Good news comes from the Bakhmut direction. The Ukrainian armed forces have pushed the enemy back by 2.5 km across a 10 km front. The Bakhmut group is gradually tightening the encirclement of Bakhmut and Russia can do nothing but shell the area while remaining in a defensive position. In the Dvorichna area shelling continues, but there are no new offensive actions from the Russians. The Ukrainian forces hold their defense and refrain from launching attacks. In the Svatova direction, shelling continues on Stelmachivka, Novoselivka, Berestova and other settlements where the occupiers fail to break through. It appears that the occupiers are preparing for a new wave of attacks by conducting artillery preparation. The situation remains unchanged in the Krimina area. The Russians conduct reconnaissance and attempt to shell Ukrainian positions. In the Siversky direction, offensive actions have ceased and the occupiers are only conducting shelling. The front line remains unchanged. Anna Mahler reported on the events that took place two days ago in the Lugansk direction. According to her, the situation in the east is complex as Russia has deployed its forces and launched an active offensive on the Lemansk and Kupinsk directions. However, the Ukrainian armed forces have repelled old attacks and the front line remains unchanged. A video of Zaluzhny appeared on social media, which the Russians claim he is somewhere abroad and no longer alive. Chief commander of the Ukrainian armed forces, Valery Zaluzhny, published his first video from his visit to the front line positions. The video also shows a watch indicating the date of Zaluzhny's visit as June 17, 2023. Zaluzhny mentioned that the enemy has deployed fortifications with extensive mining and reserves to prevent the advancement of Ukrainian units. 
However, according to his words, our soldiers are doing everything possible to liberate Ukrainian territory. According to sources from Ukrainska Pravda, this is not Zaluzhny's first visit to the front lines, but it is the first video with the commander in chief in the combat zone. According to Ukrainian media, Russians are attacking in 11 regions, which is almost a half of Ukrainian regions. Additionally, French President Emmanuel Macron announced on Monday that a SAMP double slash T missile defense system of Franco Italian production has been deployed in Ukraine. As reported by European Truth, citing Ryan News, Macron made this statement during a speech at the Paris Air Show. This is the first official confirmation of the arrival of the SMPT T system in Ukraine, following numerous reports by the media. The transfer of the SAMP T system uh, to Ukraine took place within the framework of the six package of military systems from Italy, announced in February of this year with the agreement of France. That's all from me. Thank you for watching and until next time. Bye-bye.